phone she'll place at me. My name is Amanda. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I am going into my ninth year of teaching and I'll be teaching grade one to French immersion this fall. Once a school year is done, I like to go through all of the papers that I have and try to organize them into binders. I used to have a filing cabinet and like I never used it. Um, it was like difficult to find materials and like I have stuff on Google Drive and um, like stuff from Teachers Pay Teachers, um, stuff that I've just been handed over the years and it was just a lot of paper. <laughs> so I've been working on consolidating that and keeping um, things that I do use printed and organized in binders. So what I first do at the end of each school year is I go through like any papers that are loose um, and there's always a lot and I organize them by subject area first and then I walk away and I let them sit in piles for a little bit before I come back to them. So this is now the third week of my summer break and I'm getting to organizing my last set of subject material. So last week I went through math supplies and I had, like I was trying to figure out a system that worked for my math stuff and as much as I try to spiral my math, um, which means it's not like we do one unit and then we move on to the next and then we move on to the next. It's we're working on all of the subject material at all times. Um, and so like number sense, for example, is something we work on throughout the year and geometry is something we work on throughout the year. So when I'm spiraling stuff, I like to still have my binders organized by topic just so that when I'm looking for a specific activity for geometry for example I know exactly where to find it as opposed to thinking like oh I think I did that in like the first week and then scrolling through it that way so with my math I organized it into four piles um, number sense geometry measurement and money I think <laughs> and then from that it broke down even further once I saw, okay, I have a lot of stuff in my number sense pile, and then that um, I split into addition, subtraction, um, patterning, and skip counting, um, and then like just number, straight up number identification. So like things filter once you look at it. It's sort of like organizing a class library. Like you don't know the categories you want until you see what you have. So. I did math last week and I had so much math stuff that I had it in two separate binders. Last week I went out and picked up, um, I believe it's a three inch binder. So that's all in here right now and I will put a label on here um, later today. I had already done science and social studies because those ones were pretty easy. Um, yeah, so right now I'm working on my French stuff and I try to save this biggest pile for last because I like working my way up to having a strategy as opposed to figuring out like my big strategy for my big topic um, first. So what I'm thinking, so for French I typically have two binders. Um, one of them is for our sound, like the phonics study, and then the other one is for like more general French, um, which is where like the reading and stuff comes in. Uh, the reading, the writing, and the speaking. But I do have a specific binder separate just for the sounds. Anyway, so I'm going to get to work organizing all of my French papers and we'll see where I get to. Okay, so what you just saw me do um, is attempt to organize, but I'm realizing that I don't have a clear goal of what I want other than stuff for phonics and 
non-phonics. So what I have so far is a basket of like sight words reading stuff. Then I have one basket with specifically writing. So like um, practice printing. I have like an older activity that I'm gonna take downstairs for my for when I talk grade four or five, um, just because it's something like my students aren't gonna be able to do. Um, but it's like a writing basket where there's like the letter practice, writing sheets, um, a growth mindset journal that I was working on making for them, so specifically writing. And that's where I started encountering the, uh, the difficulty was like I had a basket for writing and then I found writing sheets that were specific themed to specifically themed to like winter for example and I have binders here that are seasonal activities so like I have like winter stuff here so then I was wondering like do I just want to put it in winter um or do I want to keep it in writing I don't know so I pulled it aside for now we'll see I have a basket here for activities that go with specific books and I don't know how I want that organized. Um, a lot of it was related to distance learning stuff. Um, I would film a read aloud and then have a bunch of activities that tied in with the read aloud. So not sure how I feel about that basket. And the basket that I am certain on is the one for phonics because those are easy. It's like, yeah, that's phonics practice. Then I made a separate pile with um, sight word practice um, that will go in here with like sight word lists. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. Okay, so I figured out my organization system. So this is all reading material. So we have songs, we have little booklets, uh, sight words, um, so specifically reading materials. Then in here, it's more like specific writing materials. So for example, this is um, like an end of year memory book. There's some like writing sheets in here. Um, so like dictionary stuff, just straight up writing. Ooh, sorry for shakiness. Um, in here are any activities that I have that are specific to books that I use in the classroom. So for example, this one goes with one of the GB Plus books, um, which is Regarde Moi, so one of the first ones we look at at the start of the year. And so they'll make their own page, and then these are typically what we'll use for class booklets. So I have a few options in here. This one is all phonics work, so that's that. Then over here I have three piles that are season specific. So I have spring and summer and the binder that is going to go into and then I have fall which includes Halloween back to school um, and then winter so right now I'm just going to go through hole punch and put into binders what I can okay I'm going to walk you through what I've put together for our phonics binder which I just called the song um, I have nothing on the title or the cover page yet but I think I might make up something that has a list of everything that's inside. When you open it, I have two sets of these sound posters, which are from another school district's print shop. So um, we use those just as part of our um, bulletin board display, so we can see all the sounds that we've practiced and there's a visual reference. I also have these that I printed out myself um, from the Raconte Moi Les Sons program and these, they have like stories that go with them so So there's like a whole story that goes with these images and I have those for the sounds as well so students will see this and this at the same time. Um, then I have our homework. Um, letter we're not required to give homework and it's actually discouraged to give homework but um, my first year with primary so with grade one i did send home just like some printing practice and i'll show you an example of what those sheets look like so i just want to make sure i'm not showing any identifying information 
So what goes home with that letter is also the sounds um, that the letters make in French. And then here I have an alphabet for each, how do I want to say it, each letter sound. So for example, letter A, like the sound A, it's more like sound practice than actual letter practice. So I have a copy of the poster, the story that goes with it, and then just some practice sheets. So like this is something, for example, that I would send home with parents or with students um, for them to do as part of their homework. And here's just like circle the letter. And yeah, it's just like a collection of different sounds that we had. This would also go home for them to just practice writing the letter. Um, I don't have it for all the letters because at like in my grade level, we assume that students have learned the alphabet sounds in kindergarten, but I do have it for the vowels. So I have activities for all of the vowels that we do. And then I think like F and S were the other ones that I had. Anyway, so once we get past all of the simple letters, we get to our compound sounds. Is that what they're called in English? I don't even know. Um, anyway, so this is just a guide from Jolly Phonics, where it has like a layout of the sounds that we do practice in grade one, two, and then some words that go with it. So I don't actually use this for anything other than giving me ideas for words that have that sound in it for when we do practice in class. Um, these are cardstock magnifying glasses where we can cut out and when they're reading they can look for those sounds in their reading. And then another list of the words. Um, same thing, just hole punched over here. And I haven't written on these yet because I just put them in, but this is where we start with the accents. So we move from our simple letters to the E's. <laughs> so we have ur accent aigu, ur accent grave, and then I was supposed to put a flex in here. I probably left it there. Um, and then with C and G, we have the soft and hard. And this is when we get into our more compound. So we have our an, u, an, sh, o. And what I try to do in each of these is have the story. Um, so this is from Rakat Monesa. And then I have the Jolly Phonics just writing. Um, so tracing. Um, these didn't exist for all the sounds, so I did make some of my own. But it's, you take the sound, you put it in the word, you read the word, and then for them I have them also draw a picture of what that word is, um, because they're learning a lot of vocab as well. So we have these two, and these are as well from Jolly Phonics. We have the Jolly Phonics booklet, and my students like, it's hit and miss with these booklets. I don't know how I feel about them. I think I might make my own um, that better might suit my students' needs. So after the booklet, then I just have any other things that allow practice. So this is a mix of some Jacques Moalesa, some Jolly Phonics, and then stuff from Teachers Pay Teachers. Oh no! Just like getting stuck, sorry. So there's like poems and crafts and different activities in here, and I have that for all of the sounds. Um, again, the last two blank ones. Sorry, so this is one that I drew. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to show you are these pocket dividers that I have at the back of the binder. And so these pocket dividers um, are sorted into tabs, so it's almost like a filing system at the back. And these correspond with the sounds um, that I have within the binder. Um, for each sound, I have a bunch of different activities in here. So for example, we have this booklet, and in the booklet, like the sound is um, highlighted in a color. So I thought this would make more sense in here as opposed to in our class library. Do I have any other, I also have other books that practice those sounds as well. Um, so for example, this one, Des Accidents, this is a story where like we would read it together and then we would um, do a page that would be part of our class book. And so I'll find that in like the other basket I have over here and I'll keep those together. So I have that. Um, I pulled out the stuff that was in one of the pockets so I can show you 
like a different look. And so this is for the sound off. So we have Le Chaton, so like that booklet. Um, I have, I'm trying to cover up my name there, another booklet that has Emotion, en, 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 mon enstre. So because it has the O-N-O-N -O -N sound, I put that in here as well. And then crafts that are already made. So we do Les Papillons, butterflies. And this is like you blow in the straw and it'll send the butterfly flying. Um, avion, so the page and then my sample as well. So I have that sort of stuff in these uh, folders at the back of my binder. Okay, so I have organized all of my stuff into binders. So I have a binder of professional development. Um, that's where I have a bunch of like certificates and things like that. First Steps in Math is a tool that we use for assessing students in math and I didn't really use it this year um, just because I had other tools I was working with. Then I have math, um, phonics, reading. So this one I initially thought was like resources for teaching reading, but really this is my reading assessment binder. Um, so this is all like student information and then like the assessment and evaluation tools that I use for that. Then the French binder is where I keep stuff for um, teaching reading, writing, like all that stuff that doesn't fit into the phonics. Um, then we have socials and science. And then these three binders are seasonal and I'm working on a better system for those um, because it has month bins and lots of loose papers in there. So this is a work in progress. These green duotangs are copies of Les Trois Petits Cachins, a play. The binder is all the work that corresponds with it. A bunch of resources I sometimes use um, that families found helpful over distance learning to just have a math worksheet to print and leave with their students so that they could, so that the families could still do their work. I'm not a huge fan of handouts, but families appreciated it during online. Then I have some um, like current professional development that like isn't in my big pro D binder. Um, old day books and my current day book. So old day books is really like old schedules and things that m might come in handy when setting up and preparing for the new year. And then my day book. So that's all I have for now. Um, merci beaucoup et à la prochaine. Goodbye.